Okay, so in this curve, you have in this axis the performances of the heat exchanger, and this other axis time. So you start with a new heat exchanger, and of course you have the top performances, and then as the time goes by, the heat exchanger um, fouls up, and then you run a CIP and you bring it back to the original performances, then in time it fouls up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Until you reach this point, this is a threshold that you don't want to. Uh, uh, pass because at that point the, the channels are clogged and the CIP cycle doesn't work anymore and at that point the only chance that you have is to mechanically open and clean the plates. But So now what happens if you actually go through that threshold and at that point the CIP or cleaning place is not effective anymore? Well unfortunately you do not have any other uh, opportunity than you have to mechanically open the heat exchanger and it power if you are lucky you can just power wash the plates as they are in the heat exchanger you don't have to remove the plates one by one if they are really dirty you might need to remove the plates one by one and then power wash them or if it's really really bad and the power washing is not enough if you have scaling and if you have a level of uh, um, sedimentation that cannot be power washed but you actually need to run chemicals. Unfortunately at that point you have to ship the whole plates, which is called the plate pack, to the original vendor and normally they can run a deep cleaning. And at that point there's a number of tests that can be performed either on the plate pack or the whole heat exchanger if you ship the whole unit in terms of uh, the life of the plates, if there, if there are any cracks, they can be dye tested. They, of course, they check the, the gaskets, but depending how old are the gaskets, if you completely open the heat exchanger and you send it to the vendor, normally it's a good idea to have it regasketed in any case. And, and so there's an, at that point, there's another number of options that you have, but all these are pretty expensive. So the key is to maintain your heat exchanger to a condition that doesn't require all that. And there's no other way than monitoring the, the performances while you use the heat exchanger. So this is it. This is a very, was a very short video to talk about a very hot topic, which is when to open and clean heat exchangers, gasket and plate and frame heat exchangers. If you like this video, you can uh, subscribe to this channel where we try to tackle every time a different question. And of course, if you have any question, please leave a comment below and we will definitely answer them. Thank you very much and have a great day.